So a pretty common theme across reptile shows and pet stores and things like that are that most of the animals that they sell there are going to be nocturnal animals. So it's going to be crested geckos and gargoyle geckos and leopard geckos and ball pythons and things like that that usually only come out at night. Now a lot of people that want reptiles want to be able to see their animals during the day and see them be active during the day. So I kind of put together a little list of diurnal reptiles. Now some of these aren't going to be strictly diurnal. They're just usually going to be active during the day so just know that you might get one of these and it might for some reason not want to come out in the day and it happens but for the most part these animals are going to be active during the daytime know that a lot of the times if an animal requires uvb lighting then they're going to be active during the day because they have to have that uvb light to replicate what it would be like to be out in the sun in the wild now i won't be going into too much detail about the care of these animals it's just going to be kind of a quick overview of each one so if you're wanting to get one as i always say you need to make sure to do so much research before you get any animal that you may be thinking about getting and yeah i hope this video helps so first on the list is going to be the bearded dragon bearded dragons are most people's favorites they're found everywhere they're one of those exceptions to the rules of repticons and pet stores mostly sell nocturnal animals because they are definitely very active during the day these guys make amazing pets but their initial setup is a little on the pricey side because you are going to have to have that uv full spectrum lighting and a bigger tank size and things like that and most of these animals that are going to be active during the day are also going to be kind of on that pricey side for the initial setup these guys will lounge on your shoulder all day if you want them to you can take them outside to run around on the grass as long as you haven't sprayed any kind of pesticides or anything like that they are just all around really nice animals every now and then i know people get ones that are kind of mean but i think that kind of goes for any reptile that you're going to get but i do like to warn people that bearded dragons are very prone to getting parasites from the food that they eat because they are prone to parasites you will probably have to take your bearded dragon to the vet at least once in its life so just be aware that that will be a cost that might happen down the road Next up is the Savannah Monitor and a couple weeks ago I did a video about the Savannah Monitor. They are awesome pets to have. They do get on the larger side so they do need larger cages but yeah they come from the sub-Saharan areas of Africa so they definitely like heat and they have to have high basking spots and they have to have UV lighting. They're really cool to watch. They eat mostly bugs and mice and things like that. With this animal though just please know what you're getting into. A lot of people will buy Savannah Monitor from places like Petco and PetSmart and they're given no information and they assume that it's a beginner pet because it's sold at places like that and it is far from a beginner pet because as an adult they can get up to three foot and sometimes even bigger and they require eight foot long enclosures so just know what you're getting into before you get one but they are very active during the daytime the fire skink is an absolutely beautiful variety of lizard and they actually stay pretty small they have that bright red firing pattern up their sides and they are very active during the day they also will dig and burrow which a lot of lizards do not do that and they eat bugs and stuff like that they won't bite you or anything they're very docile but they can be kind of squirmy and they're very fast so if you let it go or it accidentally gets away from you it can be very fast and you'll have a lost lizard which is never good but for the most part they're not the most handleable lizards but they do stay a nice small size and they're fun to watch during the day and speaking of lizards that you're not really gonna want to handle is the giant day gecko and just as its name suggests it is a gecko that is active during the day. It's actually thought that the Geico gecko is modeled after this guy and they are absolutely beautiful. They have that bright green coloring with the reds and they are so pretty to look at. But that's basically all you're gonna be doing with these guys because they are not a fan of being handled. They like naturalistic setups. So you're basically gonna set up a naturalistic tropical terrarium for them that looks absolutely beautiful and have them in there looking beautiful as well 
and that's it. They're basically just for display. So if you want an animal that you can just set up in your living room or wherever to look nice, then this is the perfect one for you because he'll be out and about during the day. The Blue Tongue Skink is one of everyone's favorites. They are really cool looking. They have that blue tongue that they kind of flick around and their bodies are kind of long and snake-like but they actually require a lot of the same things that bearded dragons require and most of the time they're more active than bearded dragons. This is one of those animals that I really want but currently don't have the space for and also they are a lot harder to find than bearded dragons. So out of all the Repticons that I've went to, maybe a handful had blue tongue skinks and most of them are pretty expensive up into the two, three, four hundred dollar range and going up to thousands of dollars. But if you're looking for something that's like a bearded dragon, but maybe a little more active or something that less people have, then this is an awesome choice and they are super docile and super friendly. Euromastics are definitely lizards that not everyone is going to have, but they're really cool to look at. They come in some really pretty bright oranges and bright yellows. And like I said, you don't see them as often as you do some of the other lizards on this list. There are so many different species of Euromastics though. So if you're gonna get one of these, make sure that you pay attention to what kind of species you get because while a lot of them stay small some of them like the Egyptian Euromastix gets huge like up to 30 inches huge so definitely make sure that you're paying attention to what you're getting but yeah mostly these guys stay pretty small but they do need a lot of room because they like to run and be active they also need some pretty hot hot spots so make sure that you are able to provide that for them if this is the route that you're going just like I said make sure to understand that they do need a lot of space even though they're small a 15 inch Euromastix is going to need like a six foot enclosure so that's a pretty Pretty big variation there. Next up are chameleons. Chameleons are diurnal animals. I don't know if I would necessarily say that they're active during the day because they are a very slow moving lizard but they're absolutely beautiful to look at and to decorate their tanks and they come in so many different species and variations. Some have horns like the Jackson's chameleon, some are just absolutely beautifully colored with reds and blues like the panther chameleon. The veiled chameleon is available anywhere and everywhere. The only thing with them is that people don't take into account just how much goes into them. So people will buy them and just expect to be able to throw them into a tank and be done. But actually they need very high amounts of ventilation in their tanks. So they need like the Repti Breeze tanks. They need very high humidity. The humidity has to be kept high at all times. They really prefer having some kind of live plants in their tanks. So just realize that all that goes into it. But like I said, they are beautiful display animals. Next up is a Chinese water dragon. Chinese water dragons are another beautiful, amazing lizard that I don't think I've ever talked about on this channel. I might be wrong, but I don't think I ever have. They're really cool pets to have, but you have to understand that Chinese water dragons don't understand glass. If you put them in a glass enclosure, they will run back and forth and hit the glass so much that they rub their entire fronts of their faces raw and it can result in infections and vet visits and things like that. So they have to have special enclosures. Their humidity has to be very high. They are a tropical lizard. As the name suggests, they are water dragons. They like to swim. They like to be wet. Most people that I've seen with Chinese water dragons have basically handmade tanks for these animals. You can also do a glass aquarium that you've modified to where they can't see the glass. It's just kind of a lot of work that you have to put into it to ensure that they're not going to injure themselves in their own enclosures. If you can do all that, they are an awesome lizard that gets pretty big and stays in that tropical environment and they'll swim if you give them room to swim. They're just all around cool lizards. But like I said, they take quite a bit of effort to get them in a proper enclosure. Next up is the green anoles. Green anoles are very cheap and often overlooked in pet stores because they are super cheap and sadly a lot of people buy them as feeders. Green anoles are really cool. They have a pink dewlap under their chins, which a lot of people don't know because a lot of times in pet stores they kind of look malnourished and mistreated, I would say. But they do make really cool daytime pets. You can have more than one in an enclosure as long as they're all female. You can't have more than one male in a tank. And they'll climb and they'll play and they'll just have fun in their tanks. They're another one that do require some pretty high air circulation in those tanks. And they are pretty fragile. You can look at them and see their long skinny tails and they do just look very fragile. A lot of people do get these to where you can handle them down and they'll just kind of perch on your hand. But just know that they are very fragile and they're not something that you're going to take out every day 
to handle and play with. And number 10 on this list is going to be kind of an entire group of animals and that's going to be the group of snakes called colubrids. Now the reason that I'm grouping all of them together is because they all kind of go by the same rules of a lot of them will be active during the day but you'll also get some that want to come out at night. So things like the hog nose, corn snakes, king snakes, rat snakes, all those are generally active during the day, especially the hog nose. The hog nose 99.9% .9 of the time is going to be a daytime snake and they're super cool. Hog noses are one of my favorites. They have those adorable little snout faces that turn up into like a little shovel and they're super sweet. They stay pretty small. And then things like the rat snakes, king snakes, and corn snakes. For the most part, they're going to come out during the day. But if you get one and he only wants to come out at night, that's not too uncommon either. I know that our corn snake wants to be out in the daytime all day, every single day. And you can literally just sit back and watch him explore his tank all day and it's really cool. But when we first got him, it wasn't really like that. He would come out in the very morning and he'd come out in the very night and then he'd sleep all day and sleep at night. So he kind of just did his old thing until he, I guess, realized what he was comfortable with. And then we can't forget garter snakes in that group as well. Garter snakes can actually come in some really pretty colors. They're something that we see here a lot if you go for a hike or whatever, you'll see garter snakes just kind of out and about during the daytime. And I did not know this about them, but garter snakes actually can be kept in groups. I did not know that until I made that video, top five best snakes for beginners. And thank you to Warrior Exotics. They told me that garter snakes can be kept in groups, which I never would have known. And immediately, of course, I went into researching that. And yeah, they are actually happier in groups, I guess. So that's really cool if you want a group snake. But yeah, if you want a snake that's gonna be more active during the daytime, then the Calubra group is gonna be where you're gonna wanna look for that. But yeah guys, that is about all of the diurnal reptiles that I can think of at the moment. If you can think of any other ones, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. I put out new videos every single Sunday. And you can also follow me over on Instagram at l.622 where I post pictures of my animals. As always guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye.